Well, all right, everybody. Welcome back. And Keffels, our good friend Keffels, friend of the stream, has come back to YouTube. She has returned to creating content. She is live streaming again, and she is uploading videos again. It is very nice to have her back because she has been gone for quite a while. She was in rehab. She was getting help for drug addiction issues caused in large part by the uh, harassment she would receive online. Um, as someone who, like, knows her personally and, like, knows at least a bit more about what she was going through, um, I just want to say the amount of people who were maliciously, knowingly utilizing her drug addiction against her while, while trying to claim they were, like, from some woke position of, uh, uh, of, like, wanting to help, that they were criticizing her for that when it was very clearly, like, they're just trying to destroy her career. There, there was a few figures who did this shit, and it was very, like, very evidently fucking disgusting. Um, why did your chat rat me out? Wait, oh, chat noticed that you're here. Hey, Keffels, welcome. You were, you were lurking. They found you. Welcome, Keffels. Hopefully you enjoy my reaction to the video. But, um, yeah, welcome. Keffels, good friend of the stream, recently got out of rehab. A uh, bunch of random assholes in the internet who are trying to claim that they're good people from, like, some progressive woke stance criticizing her were very clearly just trying to ga engage in character assassination and very desperately and transparently want to destroy her career. So, uh, with that said, Keffels has returned, and she has made a video, apparently, attacking somebody who has also done very similar things, but to me. Fuck, I need to get on that classic WoW I beat, uh, WoW, uh, beat I love classic WoW. Hell yeah. We need to get you on here. We've got lots of people in the guild, and I'm totally down to have you, uh, level with my alt. Because I've got a mage that I'm leveling as my alt, so if you want to level up a character, you can level with my mage. That's gonna be awesome. But yeah, with all that said, Keffel's just recently put out a video, uh, about DJ Mule, who made a very bad video on me. And, like, in a blatant attempt to try to make money off of character assassination, he basically took, uh, like, my abusive ex trying to attack me for getting out of the abusive relationship. Like, she was upset that I managed to, like, get out of the shit she was doing to me. Um, went to the internet to try to fuck me over, and I came at back with the receipts, but DJ Mule... Despite all of this having been refuted with receipts and everything, DJ Mule decided to utilize that whole thing to try to attack me with some allegations that I was actually the real abuser. And let's just say the video he made to try to claim that wasn't very compelling. It wasn't very compelling, and not a lot of people agreed with the arguments made in the video. In fact... The video has gone down to this day as one of the most unanimously hated hit pieces on all of YouTube. Okay, he claimed at one point that I should have had makeup sex with her. Like, it was... <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. He found a way to take your receipts and victim blame you anyway. It was really something. But Keffels just dropped a video dunking on dj mule i think this is in response to the fact that dj mule i haven't seen this video by the way i purposefully deprived myself of the joy of watching this video um because uh i uh uh i wanted to react to it for the first time on stream but um i've been very excited to watch this because obviously fuck dj mule but also i recently saw that he tweeted that he was gonna have to get a um full-time or part-time job to subs like to sustain his living and that he can't do YouTube, at, like, full-time anymore. Which I don't even know how he was doing YouTube full-time in the first place at his channel size. Like, Jesus, he must have been making a lot of money off ad revenue. His CPM must have been insane. Um, but yeah, apparently he has to, uh... He has to file out a job application. His biggest fear. Um... <laughs> That said, though, uh, I'm excited to see this video because I'd like to see Keffel's dunk on DJ Mule. I think it's going to be funny. He did a podcast with Sophie from Mars and Bad Bunny. I think he got a cut from that. Ah, that makes sense. That that does make sense. Okay. All right, let's watch this. I'm excited to see what all the hubbub's about. Ugh. There he is. Well, internet. Looks like Dr. I'm back Eggman. again. Doing another one of these videos. I could be making content about how leftists Okay, I, I, I want to interject just for a second to tell you guys a joke I wanted to make on stream. 
or I, not on stream. I wanted to make um, on Twitter, but I decided not to. But I'm going to make it now on stream so you guys get to hear the joke, even though I didn't tweet it. I wanted to quote tweet uh, DJ Mule's tweet where he says he has to get a job and he can't do YouTube full time anymore with an image of Sonic and Dr. Eggman fighting like from some official art. And then I was just going to caption it. This could be us. I, I decided not to, because I, I, I didn't feel like stirring the, the fucking barrel. I didn't feel like stirring up shit. But I thought, it, I, I figured you guys would really appreciate that as a joke. Do it now, I swear to God. That goes so hard, dude. Xander Hall, if you feel like more memes after this segment, here's my DJ Mule meme. Now with more MILF jokes and less melodrama. Oh, interesting. We'll maybe take a look at that, um, Heavy Gretel. Oh, Keffels, thank you for the five tier one give to the subs. Thank you. Based. Keffels just did some white genocide. Five names at a time. I can start organizing. Thank or you, thank I could you. be doing more stuff about unions or, you know, how to get involved with direct action, but. <laughs> Welp, I had a good run as a full-time content creator, but I think I'm gonna have to search for a job, unfortunately. This month is not looking good for Donos, once again. Will Defos still keep creating, but it's absolutely gonna be less frequent. Thanks to everyone who's supported. Listen, this would be a sad message that would make me feel for him from anybody else, okay? This is only funny because it's him, and he outright admitted he only made his hit piece attack video on me for no other reason than to um, try to make more money off of uh, clickbaiting my name. Which, thank you for the validation of uh, letting me know that my name is now clickbait, DJ Mule, that I'm that famous, that you can clickbait my name now. <laughs> I've been going through the YouTube comments of my most recent video where I announced my detransition into a commentary YouTuber, and the message has been received loud and clear. I'm going to continue with this style of content for a while to see how things go. I'm going to provide you all with- I, I love the detransition memes. Keffels will, will just post a uh, video that'll be like, why I'm, I'm detransitioning, why I regret the surgery, just like, uh, something along those lines, but then it's like, not what you think it is. It's a good meme. It's some good uh, trans shit posting. And the left needs more trans shit posting. Believe me. With the alternate ending for the story of Leafy, one where transition saved her and she got off drugs. Wait, is this voice AI? Holy shit, I think this is Keffels' voice AI. Oh my god. They're neat. No, that's my voice? Okay, it might just be the editing. If I'm telling you, when they make an AI of my voice, when they make an AI of my voice, all right? I've got so many video essay ideas I've wanted to make and the only reason I haven't done it is because I don't like having to read out the script and edit the like edit each like I don't like having to like edit each segment of me talking together so there's no breathing or like stutters or like anything like that um so when they make the AI voice for me when someone does that you better believe I am going to be using that shit to do all of my like ideas I've had for uh, video essay videos and just using AI voice like there's just no reason not to it's my voice I still wrote the script I, I I'm still like talking about something I believe in but like for the sake of just getting the video out sooner and not having to strain my voice and all that bullshit I will absolutely use my own AI voice for YouTube videos and if you see me start to upload more often you know that it happened Xander.ai is that a real link someone in chat confirm or deny if that's a real link but yeah, I feel like the AI, like, technology has gotten to be so prevalent that I now see AI voice where it doesn't exist. Like, someone edits their, like, the pauses out of their video, and so there's, like, skips you can, like, audibly hear, um, like, between someone's sentences, and you start to think it's AI voice, but it's just editing. That's always been there, and people have done for, like, over a decade. It's not you? Okay. 
drugs and didn't fry all of her brain cells. In today's video, I want to talk about a lesser known content creator, but one whose entire notoriety is based on lying about people and has accumulated an incredibly toxic reputation. I'm talking, of course, about is this rendered surfing footage? <laughs> Keffels, did he use like a render of surfing footage? That's so funny. It's it's not even surfing gameplay you like ripped from another YouTuber. It's like a render of a surf gameplay footage. That's great. I tried to get into surfing lobbies in CSGO, and that shit is hard. CSGO surfing was actually way harder than it looks. Back in like the day when I was watching lots of Leafy and stuff, you know, I was 15. I was like six, 15, 16 years old. Um, and I played a lot of CSGO back then. I, I saw the surfing and it looked interesting, so I tried it out. And it I, I got decent at it, but it was hard. It was hard and I never got good at it. It's about the Dr. Robotnik lookalike himself, DJ Mule. At the True. beginning of the year, I released a video about him called The Most Disgusting Video Essayist on the Left, and I'll leave a that. link to that video in the description. Recently, DJ Mule made the brave and courageous decision to retire from full-time content creation. And by that, I mean no one actually liked his content, and he was riding off of the notoriety of abuse apologia and slandering other content creators as abusers and pedophiles to his audience of woke scolds that evidently didn't like him enough to actually support him as a creator. Well, that and also the bit of, like, support that he was getting was from the larger, more successful, and arguably more talented content creators that are friends with him. Uh, like, Sophie from Mars, Bad Bunny, uh, like, all the other, like, woke scold lefty YouTubers, like, he, he was riding on their coattails pretty hard. Um, while offering, like, literally nothing. Yeah, FD Signifier even boosted him, and it really had no effect on his channel. Because at the end of the day... The, the, like, woke scold sphere is not interested in the well-being or the uh, concept of content creators in the left spreading left-wing ideas. They're not interested in the well-being of left-wing content creators. Their only interest is drama and the career destruction of the YouTubers in the left they don't like. So they'll only come out the support when it comes to drama. But when it comes to just general support for their content, it's very fickle. For these content creators much like for the right this is how apologia is actually pronounced google it i i mean that is how it's pronounced apologia right apologia it's apologia huh i only care about drama i'll be real i like fighting people and watching other people fight it is fun drama is fun okay people say they don't like drama and they get so pissy whenever i do drama videos but it's fun and people like drama. The problem is, you don't like certain drama. Don't sit on your high horse and act like drama that isn't interesting to you. Everybody likes drama. And if it was the right kind of drama, or drama about the right thing, you would be eating it up like nothing else. Before I recap some of the bigger and more lesser known drama surrounding DJ Mule, my YouTube analytics tells me that I know where you live, so please subscribe to my channel. It's free to do, helps me out a lot, and- Sub to me also, and uh, like my stream also, and to Keffels too. And if you don't, I'm going to- Welp, I had a good run as a full-time content creator, but I think I'm gonna have to search for a job, unfortunately. This month is not looking good for donos once again. Will Defo still keep creating, but it's absolutely gonna be less frequent. Thanks to everyone who's supported. Thank God. Wow, you can pretend to be a pro a little more convincingly now. Larping Lefty gets his first job, how exciting. Have you tried not doing abuse apologia in an attempt to make money? Good luck with the job search. Hope you never come back to YouTube. You will be remembered as one of the most toxic influences on the online left. Using the aesthetics of progressivism, to defend an abuser and promote lies and harassment towards the victim. Reap what you sow, chief. Spoken like a true abuser. <laughs> the only thing I abuse is DoorDash. First Flamenco, now DJ Mule. Xander Hall sent these men who crossed him to the literal streets using nothing but his mind, patience, and persistence to outplay them. When will he finally take an L? It, it's just, it, it's just like, it's the cycle, okay? It's the Xander Hall cycle, okay? I am controversially correct about something. I get tons of shit for it, and I get cancelled for being controversially correct about something. Usually it involves me, like, predicting the future. Um, then a bunch of other people in this space who are more liked than me, or have larger audiences than me, start to realize the same thing I did a little later, and they start to say the same thing and back me up. Um, and then, 
everybody starts to realize I was right, but then everyone forgets that I was the first one to say it, and then we repeat the cycle all over again. And we're on, like, number 15 of the cycle, I'd say. Like, right now, we're, we're doing the, the, a new cycle with the serfs. Uh, Lance from the surf, so it's like where it's just it, it happens over and over and over again. I'm like, I, I I'm correct about somebody or something. I get shit for being controversially correct. I get proven correct in the future. Um, everyone realizes I was right, and then everyone forgets that I I'm right about these things, and then does the same shit to me all over again. And then it just it just keeps going. It it just it just keeps looping. Too bad not even support from FT Signifier was enough to save him off my ass off. It's time for an honest conversation about being a full-time content creator. The truth is, DJ Mule was never a full-time content creator. It was at best a hobby for him. He has 200,000 views in total over two years of content, half of which come from two drama content cycle videos he's made in desperation for relevance. In the past three months, he has streamed 28 days, averaging 43 viewers. Sure, there are a handful of people who support him on Patreon, but these are not full-time job numbers. Soon after. That's true. Like, and to give you an idea of how I know that, it's because even with like 600 people watching my stream right now, if I didn't have my website, I don't think I'd be making enough money to do this full time. Maybe now I am, but for like up until a, maybe a few months ago, um, and literally everything before that, I wouldn't have been making enough money to do YouTube full time. Ad revenue wouldn't have been enough, and um, uh, YouTube takes like a pretty big cut of your donations and subs. So if I was just monetizing through YouTube, um, I would not be making anywhere near as much money um, from the amount that you guys send to me as I do presently. And it is because of my website, which was what White Nervosa is doing, um, uh, uh, that I am actually able to monetize my content in such a way that I make the amount of money that you guys intend to send my way in donos. If it weren't for this website, I don't know if I would make enough to be able to do this for a living. I think I'd probably have to have a, like a part-time job because YouTube takes a pretty substantial cut of your income, but my website does not. I have said literally nothing about drama or debate bros for literally six months. I've banned people even in my own community for wanting me to talk about them. Yet their fans are all here like vultures shrieking with glee that I'm going through financial difficulty. These fuckers are sick in the head. The only issue they have with me is that I made a video criticizing guy who has simply done some insanely bad shit. And at the end of that video I even say I don't want anything bad to happen to the guy or even for people to cancel him. But for some reason it seems to be the worst crime of all time to them and they've been desperate for me to leave the internet since then. Well, I got news for them. I might need to get a job, but if they think for a second I won't be making content alongside that, they're fucking dumber than I thought. I haven't made anything worth watching since my dog shit abuse uploads a video and joke's on you. I'm gonna keep making that content nobody watches. So needless to say, Twitter was pretty ecstatic. God, he's so salty. Um, yeah, so Cloud Floor, or uh, Show Floor, you can buy, um... Wait, can you? Can you? No, you can't. Okay, never mind. Apparently you have to buy them off the auction house. ...about the news. Honestly, I deserve a medal for sifting through all of the Twitter threads about this and getting brain cancer, just to give you a little glimpse of what the reaction looked like so I can spare you from having to do it yourself. The thing about content creation is that it's a pretty unstable job, and I can say this as it's been my full-time job for over two years now. You have to actually have a personality, and you can't just define yourself in opposition to something else. The only way you can survive is to adapt and to change, and that's something DJ Mule can't do. The only notoriety he's gained in his time online is from two drama cycles by creating unique and original videos such as Vosh is not your ally, and even more shocking, Xander Hall is not your ally. Wow, who could have saw that coming? The problem with so many of these smaller content creators in the political live streamer scene is that they have nothing unique or original to say and only pander to tender queers and woke scolds, defining themselves almost entirely in opposition to other content creator exactly and not only that but it's it's a fickle audience right like the ones among them that actually have a following are the ones that make like actually good content but just happen to fucking suck not the ones who suck and make content about how much they suck like jesse gender fd signifier etc etc they've made some shitty videos about these topics but most of their suckiness is relegated to twitter you know like they, they keep it mostly on twitter but with their YouTube content, they actually put out well-made videos that indicate they have talent when it comes to video production and making content and discussing these things. Um, but people like DJ Mule, Soul Bunny, 
all they do is make content about how other content creators on the left aren't woke enough and their audience is very fickle and doesn't support anything they do that isn't shit stirring in the left. Xander Hall, notice how the best video is saying H Bomber Guy, it's set, uh, of course, never gets into drama. I mean, when H Bomber Guy does get into drama, he's based too. Like, H Bomber Guy immediately jumped on criticizing Illuminati as soon as she called out um, Legal Eagle's editor. H Bomber Guy was one of the first people uh, who was prominent with the platform to call out the bullshit in those accusations from Illuminati. Based H Bomber Guy. I'm glad to know that he's not in that little. That little circle of abuse uh, defending. H Bomber guy seems like a dope, dope and cool and awesome and uh, wholesome guy. Acting like the internet is just one big town hall instead of thousands upon thousands of micro communities that all intermingle with each other. But guess what, Incel Robotnik? That's not how the internet works. True. Vosh having viewers and Destiny having viewers and any other streamer or content creator having viewers that you do not like does not take away from you having viewers. And even if it did, you wouldn't want their viewers in your audience anyways. Except you don't even have viewers. Because while you constantly denounce these content creators as supposed clan members, here's who your best friend and Red Planet podcast co-host is. Okay, so maybe since you know literally nothing, you should probably, you know, not try to present yourself as a person that knows anything. The fact that she rebranded herself from Bad Bunny to Kira Chats clearly indicates that she knows that what she did was fucked and that she's rebranded to escape it, you know? Like, her rebranding is explicitly to escape. Like, rebranding as a content creator isn't uncommon, especially when you have a name like I did, like Pig Puncher, and I change it to Xander Hall. But there's a big difference between rebranding because you want to run away from your old name or your old branding or your old reputation, and, like, making a very public rebranding where you constantly... Like, I, it's no secret I, my old name was Pig Puncher, and my old videos are still up. There's nothing being hidden or, or anything like that. Um, but Bad Bunny explicitly is running away from shit. And that's why I think her particular rebrand indicates a very clear uh, uh, admission of her knowing what she did was wrong and wanting to get away from, like, being held responsible for what she's done rather than owning up to it, like an adult or like a lefty would. Also, clearly white, clearly racist. You can't think of a single... You can't think of a single possible form of anti-black racism. If you found me a black bisexual man, I might throw up in my mouth at the thought of, of sexual uh, contact with them. You can't hate gay people anymore. Why not? I want to hate whoever the fuck I want to hate. I, for one, would never, I wouldn't have, I would never be involved with a guy who's bisexual. If a guy's, like, having sex with other guys. This, this woman's friends with, like, Pretty much all of the, like, clouded up lefty video essayist YouTubers that hate me, Vosh, Kethels, Demon Mama, Shark. Like, yeah. Uh, Bad Bunny is friends with pretty much all of them. So, I hope it's very clear how hypocritical they all, all are. Like, I hope it's very clear how blatantly hypocritical they are. Because... Rebranding does not indicate she's changed. It's indicated that she wants people to forget. And then he's like, oh, maybe I'll try having sex with you. I'm like, oh, I want to hate a person because they're wearing Crocs. Why can't I hate a person because they, because of whatever else trivial re If that reason is trivial, tr oh, wow, I, if I can hate a person for wearing Crocs, that's an incredibly trivial reason. And then people can harp on me about how stupid it is for me to hate an entire person because of the Crocs they wear. But you see me fuck, I will hate the fuck out of that Croc wearing freak. And I have no qualms about it. Now to DJ Mule's credit, he does go to bat for his friend but he makes up a fictional Gamergate-esque narrative. I mean, come on, people. You can clearly see that this is absurd and has no basis in reality. It is simply the systematic destruction of a woman on the internet simply because she chose to be outspoken and make political content. Seriously. The last time I remembered, none of the victims of Gamergate ever said anything as reprehensible as White people are only attracted to other white people because of evolution, and that's why she doesn't want to date black people. 
I'm like, that that's her argument. It's fucking insane. She literally transitioned into Adolf Hitler. That's a huge section of people to just completely write off as unattractive. And it just seems like kind of strange. Like, is it literally like just the skin color is like unattractive to you? Like, do you, I don't know. It just seems it's like a weird It's as simple as evolutionarily, we want to fucking propagate our fucking like shit. And so propagating our own fucking shit involves finding people that are similar to our own shit. So if you've gotten this far in the well video, spoken. you might think I'm being cruel or disproportionately mean towards DJ Mule. Like maybe he's just an idiot who also can't get laid and thinks white knighting for girl Hitler can help him in this endeavor. But no, girl he's Hitler. actually an incredibly malicious person, and I'll show you why. Before I talk about the big Xander Hell drama that he is mostly known for, I want to talk about the lesser known That's drama me. between DJ Mule and myself because of him irresponsibly oh, pedo jacketing another streamer named Chud Logic. When I was new to the political live streaming oh. scene, DJ Mule and I were dude I don't even like chud logic but I remember that shit and it was absolutely fucked yeah yeah he also fucking tried to uh slander chud logic as a pedophile which is fucked as well yeah me and chud logic don't particularly like each other like I don't really hold any bad blood necessarily it's just like his editor's a Nazi who kind of hates minorities and also me for not hating minorities so there's a bit of a conflict of interest there but like I don't I don't really dislike Chud Logic, um, but uh, uh, it is it is it, there's definitely like he's not my favorite guy on the internet, but it is pretty fucked to uh, to just try to slander him as a as a pedo, which is very much in line with the kind of shit DJ Mule does. He's a slimy little bastard. For Twitter mutuals, and I even once appeared on the Red Planet podcast alongside him and the streamer formerly known as Bad Bunny. I trusted them. And because of that trust, when I saw DJ Mule call Chud Logic a pedophile, I didn't hold back saying as much on my stream. You like racism? Or Pretty sure that guy is man. like a pedophile. CTV, like, how about actually, yourself? Uh, get on a, that was fake. Infinity, All right. Or Infinity Acre Wood, right? So the I never rolled with it, be, like, cause like I don't know if it's actually true. I didn't actually look into it. I just have a lot of people around me, like, convinced <laughs> he's a pedophile. But knowing, uh, right. knowing <laughs> that I have been pedo jacketed before. I don't feel comfortable like 100% saying yes, he is in fact a pedophile. Oh, so you just say, I think he's a pedophile and that's okay then. Excellent. Good to know. I later found out, however, that this was misinformation and I confronted him in DMs. To so for those who don't know, DJ Mule was one of the people pushing the idea that uh, Chud Logic was a pedo. Um, Keffels saw that not knowing like why they're like not knowing, oh, is there any reason like... DJ Mule had I don't think DJ Mule had even made his video on me yet, so he was just kind of a random lefty guy. She believed what DJ Mule said, not really thinking why would DJ Mule lie, right? Um, there wasn't really any reason to believe that, and uh, that ends up reflecting badly on her because she repeated a lie told by DJ Mule. Um, and you are still responsible for what you say. Um, you know, you do have like a responsibility to look into that kind of stuff, and I'd say Keffel's learned her lesson there. But um, I would still say that a lot of uh, blame lies on DJ Mule as well, considering he is the one who originated said lie, or at least propagated said lie to yet another public figure who spread said lie unknowingly. Tell him. And DJ Mule knowingly lied uh, and like knowingly spread that lie. Keffels did not knowingly spread that lie. She believed it about how much I was harassed by using the information he provided to me. I later released those DMs in a video on my channel called Bad Bunny Liar Grifter Manipulator, and I'll leave the timestamps to the full DM leak in the description. I'm gonna show you Chud Logic and Xander Hall's reaction. So you guys may not be aware of this, but like when you get into drama with another streamer, uh, which obviously Keppels has gotten into a lot of drama with uh, with um, Chud Logic. You're scrolling through Twitter and you stumble across what appears to be a thread of evidence this person who you are having beef with is actually a pedophile. You're you're pretty likely to be like, whoa, okay, all right. Well, I just got handed the W then. Just got a just got a point to this, and I've won the argument. I've won the whole drama. I've won the debate. Like like. It seems like you've had, like, a W handed to you on a golden platter. So I can't really blame Keffels for trying to take it. <laughs> <laughs> so the plot thickens, guys. The plot thickens. The reason that Keffels said that about me on stream. So I thought that it just came... Because this is the thing. And this is very revealing for me. I thought that it came out of nowhere. And that Keffels just randomly said that about me. And... I thought maybe she was alluding 
to the drama that I was involved in. But like, I didn't realize that <laughs> this person had said it to her. So, so actually it was DJ Mule that had told her this and she just repeated the claim on stream. Unbelievable. I actually was like pretty amicable with the guy. Um, I think then the, you know, the allegations came out and he obviously sided super hard against me, which, you know, a lot of people did. It is what it is. W wasn't the girl in question 30 years old? There were, there were like two girls. One was 30 years old and the other definitively lied to Chud Logic's face about her age. Come on, man. Like that evidence is out there. Uh, see, DJ Mule has a habit of, you know, just kind of making shit up, even though there's already pretty substantial hard evidence to debunk whatever claims he's trying to make about people. See, no one can say that I'm not fair and that I'm like a spiteful shit. People are giving me so much shit about calling out Lance's abuse apologia of, uh, of what Illuminati did to her uh, collaborators on her channel slash tenants because she's a landlord. Um, people gave me so much shit for calling Lance out for that, saying I'm like a shit stir, I have thin skin, and I'm like spiteful, and, and I like attack people for disagreements. But like, Chud Logic and I have had quite a bit of beef, and here you have me on stream, like clips that I don't even remember existed, of me like thoroughly debunking allegations, false allegations, I should clarify, um, that he was a pedophile. I feel like... I feel like I didn't have to do that. People have given me too much shit saying that I'm spiteful. I am spiteful, that is true. But I'm not unreasonably spite spiteful, okay? Nazan, you're pretty good at being logic-pilled and not making hasty generalizations when it comes to drama. I try not to, thank you. But, like, people have been giving me shit about that. But, like, I I'm not gonna sit here and allow a lie like that to spread about another creator in this space, regardless of whether or not I like them. That is a serious accusation. It can end careers, it can destroy lives, it, can, it has serious and far-reaching uh, allegations, and it's false, so, uh, yeah. But then since... Yeah, she did apologize to me. But then since then, he is like, at every opportunity that's, that's plausible to do so, you know, obviously, he is a completely failed loser content creator. This man has, like, like an Avengers lineup of debate streamers in his mind. It's, like, me, Vosh, uh, I, I don't even, like, probably Demon Mama, maybe? Funnily enough, it was actually Demon Mama. <laughs> this is, like, a little while ago. Demon Mama asked me to raid a charity stream. And I thought, okay, yeah, sure, I'll raid a charity stream. Why not? And it was Bad Bunny's charity stream. Um, and even oh, though, no, even at that know. time, I was a bit like, Ooh. I mean, now I've obviously got very strong opinions on Bad Bunny, but back then I was a bit like, oh, seems like a bit of a bitch. You know, that was kind of my perspective, but whatever. I'll raid a charity stream anyway, just to do the right thing. So, raided a charity stream. She's like, oh, hey, Chad Logic, thanks for the raid. You know, kind of normal, like. And this fucking DJ Mule fellas, they're like, with a face like a slapped ass. He's not happy with it, clearly. And I know that DJ Mule is someone that had spoken hardly against me, quite hard against me with the allegations. And I just sort of like just left, didn't say anything and just thought nothing more of it, right? A few days later, DJ Mule puts out this tweet and he's like, just to remind everyone, Chud Logic's a groomer and kind of tries to relitigate the whole thing. And Bad Bunny retweeted it. <laughs> so just to clarify the se sequence of events, I had in good faith raided a charity stream Okay, hey, just because it's a charity stream. Obviously, didn't want to bring any drama into it. Didn't want to, you know, literally could have just raided it and left it at that, and that was that. But no, this fucker has to go out and put a thread out and call me a groomer again, trying to relitigate it, like, months later. Look at this, like, this is how these people operate. They're so fucking... This is honestly, like, the best takedown video of DJ Mule I've seen. Like, I, I thought this would mostly be focused on, uh on, like, the drama that I had with him. But this is taking down, like, several different things that he's done. Like, I already knew about this shit that had happened with him and Keffels, um, at least a bit of it. But, like, this is a much better thorough takedown than even what I did. I deserve more than 16k views. We're gonna be linking the original video in the comments. And you're all gonna watch. You're all gonna comment. You're all gonna like, and you're all gonna subscribe, and ring the fucking bell icon, right? Right, chat? <laughs> okay, good.
fucking dishonest and they come in in their little oh oh i'm so sorry that happened i never would have asked you to do that i really appreciate you though and then look how quick the time like changes. i appreciate what you do a lot and you defo put yourself in the crosshairs with that but like yeah Scumbags. it's a super fucked up situation and he is a groomer um, and I, I really am sad that Keppel's had to get the blowback for this because, you know, while yes, True. you know, a responsibility for spreading misinfo and all of that, and yes, it did need to be called out. Very clearly, you can tell here from this private in in interaction, Keppel's is pretty upset that she unknowingly spread misinfo, which has harmed her credibility. Now, does this mean that there's a learning, like, lesson to come from this? Obviously, yeah. Um, but it goes to show just how much of a liar this DJ Mule guy is. You can't take him seriously. I'm going to be honest with you, right? In this situation, I don't think that Keffels has really done anything wrong. Like, you know, she wanted some more information because she felt that she'd been misled in regards to my situation from tweets he'd put out. Um, Hold on, there's a meme. There's, I have a meme that, uh, there, there was a meme that I saw today that I feel like perfectly illustrates exactly what you gotta do whenever you see some shit like this, okay? Okay, I can't find the, the meme with the caption, but I can find the meme image, and I'll just tell you what the caption said, okay? So this is the image, okay? And it was captioned, You must learn to simply observe. Not everything needs to be reacted to. If you get the reference, this is funny as fuck. And he provided the information, and then 12 hours later, he's fucking reing in her, re -ing in her DMs. Keffels is right. Why should, like, why should she trust you? You've put out a piece of information that even people within their own community were disagreeing with. If you look at a chat when she called me that, people were saying, hang on a sec, hang on a sec, hang on a sec. You know, that's a scary idea that he actually ends up, pe the, the online left forgets about these lies and like in a year from now, he falsely accuses someone else and people buy it. It's a scary idea. Needless to say, I'm glad that making content isn't financially viable anymore for DJ Mule. He's a disgusting person who claims that he wants nothing to do with drama and would rather do political organizing and mutual aid and all sorts of real activist stuff. But here's the thing, no one stopped him from doing that. Engaging in drama was entirely 100% his own decision, and it was a decision he made because he realized it was good for views. The problem is, the moment that drama isn't relevant anymore, no one wants to stick around for his smug face and terrible opinions. And this isn't even getting into the hit piece he did on Xander Hall. Well, I don't want to rehash every single thing about this, there are a few things I want to go over. First of all, he automatically assumed Xander Hall was lying about her ex being addicted to meth in a video essay that he said he spent Misgendering. You misgendered me. You misgendered me, Keffels. This is cisphobic. Cisphobia confirmed. No, I didn't. You're a beautiful lady. Oh my god, am I being force femmed by Keffels? Is it happening? I was warned about this. Is it finally happening? Fuck. No. No! And months researching. Which Merrick was able to confirm in literally less than 30 seconds. Anyway, he says that in the police report that she was definitely done for methamphetamine for being in possession. Look at these police reports. It doesn't say in the police report that she was definitely done for methamphetamine. Now, look at these police reports. It doesn't clip. say anywhere here that she was done for meth. It says that she was done for being in possession of a controlled substance. You do know what a controlled substance is, don't you, Xanderhal? Many, 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 many things. But no, Xander Man needs you to think that it is meth. You know, the bad drug. The, all the crazy- Also, this was in California, so, uh... It certainly wasn't weed. E even if you couldn't confirm exactly what drug it was from the, uh, from the arrest code or whatever it's called, um, it's California and weed is not a controlled substance there, it, at least like in the way that you would get arrested for having it. Maybe if you, you would get a DUI for, for using, like having it in the car, maybe driving, but yeah, it's, it's California, so it wouldn't be weed. You got that. Unhinged druggies do. All the crazy unhinged druggies that steal oh, I've seen the clip. and hurt I know people what... and rob people and rape people. No, no, no. I've seen the clip. I know what, uh, I, I know what Merrick does. Um, I know that the, the arrest code has exactly what drug it was uh, she was charged with possession of on there and she shows it. I'm just saying, like, even if that wasn't the case, even if that wasn't the case, um, oh yeah, it also had a uh, paraphernalia too. So like, yeah. Um, but even if that wasn't the case, it's California. So you know it's not weed. 
You know, it's not like the kind of thing that would be like probably okay to take part in without your partner's knowledge, you know, but anything other than that, you're getting into like, you know, addictive, hardcore shit territory. So I feel like that's just a DJ mule indicating he doesn't know American law moment. To think that it is meth. Because you know I feel like he's implying it was weed, right? It not the implication here that he's implying it was weed. I guess it could have, like, he could be implying it was like a psychedelic maybe because those are still pretty illegal and those aren't really a big deal. But, um, like, like, they aren't really a big, they're not addicted. They're not like, yeah. Also, Lonnie stole thousands. Yeah, I mean, I also proved that, but yeah. You know, the bad drug that all the crazy, unhinged druggies do. All the crazy, unhinged druggies that steal things and hurt people and rob people and rape people. Just so they could get their fix. And making out that Lonnie is a person like that would fit his narrative. Pretty convenient. Oh, oh, sorry, controlled substance. Okay, yeah. Um, so let's see, 11, 377. <laughs> you can't see it because her chat covers it up. But... Oh my God. Yeah. Oh my fucking God. No fucking way. No fucking way, look at that. Meath. Possession of methamphetamine. Jessic! Somebody clip- Jessic! We need to cook! This. Somebody needs to fucking clip this. Holy shit, somebody fucking clip that. Oh, you're kidding me. You weasley little fucking liar. I just want to take a second, though, to point out how performative and awful this guy is in so many different ways. He's supposed to be a leftist, but then he makes a cheap shot at Xander Hall saying he doesn't think Xander Hall attended college, which can only make you assume that he's looking down on- well, I definitely did not attend college. I don't know how that's supposed to be an own, because I am very happy I did not attend college, and the idea of having to go to college is like, I, I would rather go to prison. I think I'd rather, like, serve, like, two months in a low-security prison than go to college for, like, a year. Because, like, if I went to prison for two months, like, like a low-security prison for two months, think of the stories I would have when I got out, you know? Like, that would be content for months, the amount of stories I would have lined up. Um, on top of that, it would only be two months of, like, not being able to make content as opposed to, like, years of seeking out a degree where I would have to, like... I don't know if you guys know this, but, like, I barely get enough time for anything that I enjoy doing in my standard as it is, you know? Like, I, I just... I... I... Yeah, I have not gone to college, and I don't want to. Yeah, like, FPS Russia? FPS Russia got the most ideal possible, like, prison experience. He shouldn't have gone to prison at all, but, like, of all things to happen to him, going to, like, a minimum security federal prison camp... It's it's about as easy as it gets, you know, like for, for 60 days, I think it was 60 days in a minimum security federal prison camp. Not not the worst, not the worst place to be imprisoned on anyone from a poor family or anyone who struggled with a learning disability with his shit eating grin. I'm pretty fucking sure that Xander Hall didn't go to college, so I don't know how he knows what an actual frat house party is. But anyway, that's by the by or the fact that he said that. I, I do get what, like, the the gotcha was supposed to be, like, I'm uneducated or whatever, but, um, do you have to have gone to college to know what a, like, trashed house looks like after a frat party? Because, I don't know if DJ Mule's been to a frat party, but a lot of people at frat parties aren't in college or in the fraternity. Like, a lot of frat parties just have random women and random dudes showing up. Like... The, like the I, I, like me not having gone to college does not mean that I haven't had the opportunity to go to a frat party. I haven't gone to a frat party, but I certainly could have gone to frat parties. Yeah, like frat houses throw parties all the time and invite just random people. Like you, you don't have to be at the college or in the fraternity to go to there. That Xander Hall should have makeup sex with his abusive ex, which is just like 
What the fuck, dude? No debrief, no makeup sex, just sweep it all under the carpet. Don't even think about your poor, homeless ex-girlfriend. But the funniest part of this entire video is him trying to attack Xanderhal for saying his ex would leave rotten food in the fridge. He complains that all the food in the fridge would go bad, and I'm not being funny, man, but like, Xanderhal, have you never been in- I guess for those that don't know the story behind that, um, as I said uh, earlier in the stream, actually, coincidentally enough, my diet is uh, very, very manageable and very cheap, okay? And I mostly buy things that don't go bad. So, like, or at least don't go bad, like, anytime soon, you know? So, it, like, there's no, there's nothing that's going to go bad or needs to be, like, immediately dealt with. Like, it's all shelf-stable stuff, usually. And um, that's what I like to eat. But what she would do is buy just entire multi-hundred dollar grocery orders of shit and like a lot of it would be fresh like cooking ingredients and a lot of it would get used um but a lot of it didn't and the stuff that didn't went to waste and it just wasn't stuff that i wanted to be purchased in the first place with and it was my money that was being used to purchase it so it was like it, it was just one of those habits that she had that i was like kind of willing to look past what we were working on but then obviously much bigger issues came up but i felt it was uh relevant to the story so that's why i brought it up but yeah i mean her buying ex like lots of like uh, perishable food ingredients and letting them go bad was kind of a problem considering she was also stealing from me and we kind of needed the money control of a fridge in your entire life it happens all the time because unfortunately capitalism doesn't allow us a lot of time to actually address things like that it's Plus, if you've got adhd fault. like me planning and cooking is such a drama like cooking is a whole ass thing dude lots of people get uber eats what, I'm what, that, that that's Okay, I've already, this has already been responded to a million times. I'm going to be getting an Uber Eat after I've recorded this video because I've got no energy to cook. He just told on himself so badly because really as it did. was revealed, he had only streamed 28 days in the last three months. Now, if that's his regular streaming schedule, that means... People who have absolutely no skill at money management are the people who constantly order Uber Eats and DoorDash. I, I mentioned this earlier, but I only at this point order or Uber Eats or DoorDash or order any food whenever I have friends over and they're hungry. Like, if Cherry comes over, if, like, uh, fucking Demon Mama comes over, um, like, if, if, I, or if Ethan comes over, like, I'll always just, like, usually order food through DoorDash or Uber Eats or Postmates or something, because it's easier than cooking when I'm just hanging out with a friend. But if I, like, I'm not ordering food from a restaurant, I'm craving it, but I have self-control, and I have half of a raw steak in the fridge that I'm going to pan fry and eat for dinner, alongside with probably some green beans. I think I'll throw some green beans in afterwards, butter them up, throw in some uh, lemon juice and, and some lemon pepper. I like a little bit of, like, citrusy. Like, uh, I, I like to break down the, uh, the, not green beans, sorry, um, asparagus, sorry. I don't know why I said green beans. Asparagus. Some lemon pepper seasoning on the asparagus with some lemon juice. I like to break down the, uh, asparagus in, like, uh, a nice citrusy lemon juice, uh, uh, like, kind of glaze and get it, like, a, like nice and tender, but with a little bit of a crunchiness to it. Uh, okay, I don't know why I'm going, okay, I just stun locked on, like, describing, hornily describing the food I'm gonna make for dinner tonight. I should probably resume the video. Means that he only streams three days a week, leaving four days a week where he could cook easily. And don't even give me the ADHD sob story. Be like a regular adult and take some Adderall. I do it, Vosh does it, loads of other content creators have to do it because we're all ADHD brained as shit. I I definitely do need to get on Adderall, guys. When I when I get on some ADHD medication, it's gonna be over for all of my enemies, okay? Like, I don't think you guys understand. I'm pretty certain I'm operating at like 60% brain power and have been my entire life. I I just I can't imagine how wild it's gonna be uh, when I when I finally get on some good shit. When we both get medicated, it's over for our haters. Oh, it's fucking over. Shit. How can you call yourself any kind of leftist when you've got an opinion like that? There's literally no excuse. Like, I don't even like making these arguments, but it's like 
honestly infuriating. It's like they made him up in a lab to be literally the worst socialist ever. Like he's literally everything that right-wingers think socialists are. He literally said, oh, you know, I only literally. work three days a week. I have four days off every week, but I can't cook. I'm too lazy to cook because uh, I have all these problems and shit that I made up. The last thing I'm going to say about this is that he's so obviously manipulative with how he frames things. If he really cared about the victim, which he believes is Lonnie, he would listen to her. Because in situations involving domestic abuse, Here you're supposed to listen to the victim. But instead of doing that, he continues, to this day, to double down on calling Xander Hall an abuser and making up lies about the situation even though Lonnie herself has commented on the video multiple times, saying it shouldn't have had as many views as it did and that it was a dog shit video. But anyway, that's basically everything I have to uh, say about the DJ Mule situation. Dude sucks and- I wonder if she feels guilty. I feel like- I feel like she's kind of got to, because what she did was really fucked up. Like, I, I think I was 20 years old when we started talking, and uh, she lied to me about her age and said she was two years younger than she really is. Um, she was actually, like, 31, I think, when I broke up with her. So she would have been 29, I think, when I started talking to her. Um, and I was 20. Which I don't think that's like, like, I don't think the age gap was problematic. Like, I don't think we had like a problematic age gap going on. And had she not been like lying about her age or doing other shit behind the scenes, I don't think it would have been an issue or it wouldn't have been an issue. Um, the age gap, in my opinion, um, between the two of us. But uh, then like manipulating, lying and robbing said like much younger person that you've like uh, gotten into a relationship and had move across the country to live with you. Um and like pay for you to exist for the last couple years really fucked up so i wonder i wonder if she felt guilty about it and was like holy fuck people are trying to weaponize this to like destroy him i like i i that's not what i wanted you know i feel like her her motivations were more self-serving than like uh trying to destroy me right like i feel like the things that she did were more so in a narcissistic self-serving effort to like help herself not so much a spiteful attempt to fuck me over maybe that's me being too generous or too charitable but like i feel like that's like i feel like she realized it was going too far and and once people were trying to turn me into like this bad guy she was like okay no i can't i i can't abide this i i that's you know i think this has gone too far like i can't rob him fuck him over in all these ways and then also lie about it all and try to make him out to be the bad guy to the public maybe she felt guilty and he deserves worse than this quite honestly this video is probably going to get demonetized just like my last two videos did so if you'd like to support the channel you can subscribe to my patreon for only five dollars a month love you all see you in the next video that was a good video Good shit, Keffels. That was probably the best takedown of just DJ Mule as a content creator overall that I've seen. That was really good. That was a damn good video. Five dollars a month. You heard her. Also, remember, remember, chat, there's a link down below in the pinned comment of the video to Keffels' original video. Go watch it. Go comment. Go like. Go subscribe. Or I will find you and I will kill you. In Hightail. Um, yeah, so thank you. I appreciate the, um, the video. It was based as Keffels, and I appreciate all the support that you guys have sent my way, and I hope you guys send some of that support over Keffels' way, because that video is damn good, and, uh, uh, we're, 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 we're building a wall, a, a vanguard of not cringe, terminally online, socially inept, uh, lefties.